So we're back with lesson nine, part two, and I've started up my local ZAMP server, and I'm just gonna load our music library app application. So here's my local copy. So we created our homepage last week with our shared header and footer, and we've got register and log in. And as an authenticated user, I have access to the add edit and delete links, register and log out. Sorry, register and log in appear in my nav bar, disappear, and my username and log out appear. Um, we're gonna do a few more things with this. There's some base functionality here around kind of user registration and password we wanna talk about. And then we also uh, need to talk about a really important topic, which is uh, SSL and HTTPS. So we're gonna cover that in this part of the video. So I'm gonna log out of my site. And if we go to the register page, one of the issues that we have is on our register page, well, let's say I wanna create a new user. We did enforce, let's open up my project in my code editor. We did enforce a strong password pattern. So if we view the page source, we used a regular expression with the pattern attribute stating that passwords had to have at least one digit, at least one lowercase character, at least one uppercase character, and had to have a minimum length of eight. And we've enforced this pattern in both the password box as well as the confirm password box. One thing we haven't done in our form is we haven't actually done any validation to make sure the user is giving us the same password twice. So we should enforce that in our form and we can use a little bit of JavaScript to do this. So I'll open up our project. So here's our register form. So what we want to do is add a JavaScript that whenever a key is pressed and whenever a key is pressed um, in the confirm box, we'll want to check that it's the same as uh, in the password box. Let's just check. I'm just going to refer to my notes for just a second. Yeah, we'll do it on the confirm. So in my project, I'm going to go into the JS and the scripts folder. And I'm going to make a new function here. I'll create variable for our This will give us the password value. I have to refer to my notes a couple times. My printer's not working this morning. Please excuse that. And our second password will be equal to the confirm value. If we look in the register form, we've added IDs. So our IDs are password and confirm. So the IDs, we add these attributes so we can interact with these elements programmatically in JavaScript on the front end. We add the name attributes so we can access these elements programmatically in PHP when our form is submitted uh, using the post array. Then I'll create variable we're going to add a new element but here we're not setting it equal to the value we're just going to reference an html element as well so we now need to go and create this new element called pwmsg 
in a register form. So I'm going to put it beside the confirm box. So I'm, what I'm going to do here is just add a span tag and match the ID for password message. So if the passwords don't match, we can display a message here. And we can also set the CSS class. We'll use a bootstrap danger class to set that to red. When the passwords do match, we'll want that message to disappear. Now we want to compare the two passwords entered. Here, password values form reference message element. So if password one is not equal to password two. We're going to set the inner text of password message to be we're also going to set the class danger which is a bootstrap class that will print the red font otherwise We'll make sure our, our password message is an empty string. And the class name, we don't need to do this, but we'll just clear it out. So there's nothing in there. I guess we can put another comment in here. Let's play error message in red. Remove error message. So this means if a user enters in two different passwords, our message will show up in red. And as soon as they correct the password, that message will disappear. We won't see anything yet. We're going to have to call the compare passwords method. We want to do this every time. Um, we want to do this. Uh, every time the user finishes typing a character in the confirm box. So in my confirm box, we'll use the key uh, on the key up. We don't want it as soon as they press the key, we want it after the key press has finished. Um, and we should actually return and then in our method here we'll return false In this case, we'll return true. And we should also call this method on the click event, on the button click. So if our password message is showing, we're not going to allow the user to submit the form. So we're going to call it on key up. We're also going to call it on the on click. Again, we'll return compare passwords. So if compare passwords is false, our button click will, our form submission will not happen. So let's go ahead and try this out. We'll see how it works. I'm going to go back to my register form. I'm going to put in the password capital T, EST, one, two, three, four.
and just make sure our crypt file is linked. Should be. Oh, my apologies. I've been editing the wrong script file. <laughs> Sorry, I have a couple copies of it. Or else my script file is not showing up. So let's see why. Oh, I just didn't refresh the page. It was cached. I think our code should be okay. Now, as soon as I press a key and confirm, it tells me my passwords don't match. As soon as they do match, that error goes away. I add an extra character. My message comes back. And when I click the register button, It now is not going to save that user unless my passwords are matching. So now it will save successfully when I put into matching passwords. We'll check the database. See if my user account did get created. Ah, here's the problem. Our save page should not have an authentication check. This needs to be a public page, save registration. I think I put this in here accidentally last week. So we'll need to remove that code. Obviously the user can't be authenticated yet. <laughs> We're just creating their new account. We'll go back and try again. Good thing I spotted that. I wouldn't have known it was there. So I'll create my user for it again more time. A mismatch password, it tells me it doesn't match when I correct it. Now we'll see if I can log in. So now I'm logged in as user four. So I think at the end of class last week when we were putting our authentication check in, I accidentally put it in save registration where it shouldn't be. So there's our password. I'm gonna check for any messages. The other thing that we wanna do with this, um, had the question come up the other day, we'll log out. Well, how does it work on those websites where we're typing our password and some websites give us the option to actually see the password? So how do we do that? So let's we're going to enable that feature. Basically, what happens is we're going to use JavaScript. We're going to add a little icon here that if the user clicks it, we're going to change the type of the input from password to text. This actually allows not that secure, but some people want to be able to see their passwords so they're sure of the characters they're using. So I put a couple of icons on Blackboard for you. So in the lesson nine folder, there's two icons. If you click on this show hide icons for password. So I've taken these from Google's official material design site. It's a great resource under material.io. So these are Google, uh, Google's design elements. So these are available. You can use any of these icon sets and they have them in different kind of shades. 
you like. So you can click on any icon. You can download it either with a dark background or a light background. You can download it as an SVG. Typically, those are used for Android devices, so they'll scale. Or you can grab a PNG. So there's other components here as well besides just the icons. So a lot of this stuff is for Android development. So I've grabbed the show and hide icon. So I'm gonna save each of these. And then we're gonna change our register page to have the show icon. When it's clicked, this will become a regular text box. The show icon will disappear and the hide icon will appear instead. So we're gonna add a little more JavaScript to our register form for this. I'm going to right click and save my show icon and I'm going to save that in htdocs, music library, I'm going to save it in the IMG folder where we already have our, uh, if you don't have an IMG folder, you can go ahead and create one. I actually did create a logo. I just haven't put it in yet. Maybe do that a bit later. And then I'm also going to save the hide image. Again, just checking for some comments, any comments. So on our register form, beside the password box, I'm now gonna put in an image. We need to give it an ID because we're gonna to want to programmatically toggle the source of the image with JavaScript. So give it an ID of show hide icon. And we'll set the source is img show.png and we'll give it an alt tag of show hide password. Can you go back to our register form? We need to get this little icon appearing here. So what we want to do is write a click handler that when it's clicked, we want to change the type of this input box. It's, we've set it out as type equals password. And if show is clicked, we want to change it to be type equals text. So we'll create a new function in our JavaScript file. I'll show hide password. Here's what we're going to do. So if we also want to reference our image. because we're gonna to need to change the source of this image depending what the type is. So for our password type, password, that means right now the characters are hidden. We're gonna change it. We're gonna change the image source to
pi icon. Otherwise, we're going to do the reverse. In that case, we already have the text box. We want to set it back to a password box. And we want to set our image back to show. This will toggle the text box and toggle the image. So what we now need to do is write a click handler on our image that will call this function to toggle the box and toggle the image. Let me go back on my icon. We can now call show hide. method. So let's try this out, see how it works, see if we need to make any adjustments. So I'm going to refresh my page so it shows password box. I can start typing ABC123. If I click the icon, it converts this box to a regular text box and the show icon disappears, the hide icon takes its place, and if I click it again, the box is converted back to type password, and my hide icon goes away, my show icon comes back. Now, you may not want to enable this functionality. You may feel that for security reasons, it's best not to allow users to ever see their password, but this is becoming more and more common. More and more sites are allowing you to toggle your password briefly. Um, you can even change it so that it's, for example, only when the button's clicked and held, and then as soon as the user lets go of the mouse, it toggles back. So that's an option as well. Student asked about it the other day, so I thought we would we would cover off how to do that. I'll just put the code back up for a second. So here's our new line with our image. It's important we give the image an ID. If we don't give it an ID, we can't access it in our JavaScript. And then our click event calls our show hide password method where we're referencing the password input. We're referencing the image. And then we're deciding what the type should be for the input and which image, sor which source should show in that image tag. Well, again, completely optional, but something that um, some students may want to know how to implement. So we've got one last topic to cover in this part of the class video, and it's a really important topic. I've got some resources up here on D2L, and I want to go over them with you. So there's an item here called SSL resources. Some of you may know a bit about SSL already. SSL is, has been critical for years. It's more critical than ever in the modern web. Every web application you ever build should now be secured with an SSL certificate, and there are a number of reasons why. Well, first of all, what is SSL? Um, SSL stands for Secure Socket Flare. And important thing to know about the HTTP protocol is by default, all text is sent. Uh, all communication between a web page and a web server is sent in plain text. So if I fill out this user registration form, actually maybe I'll go here to my online version on AWS. So if I fill out this form, Anything I submit to the server, anything that goes from my internet connection all the way to the AWS web server, that's sent in plain text. It could be a password, it could be a credit card number, it could be a bank account number, it could be anything. So anybody that intercepts that HTTP request I'm making to the server, they can actually very easily read what's inside it. So what an SSL certificate does is it encrypts all of the traffic that happens between the browser and the web server. So that may be a case where the user is submitting sensitive information on a form, or it may just be where they're querying sensitive information, like let's say uh, a bank account uh, or their email address, their email inbox from a web server. So SSL, there's different levels of encryption, and it used to be recommended that SSL certificates were only required for things like login pages, credit card payments, but um, they've become the norm now, and they're industry standard, thanks to Google, for a couple of reasons why, and we're going to look at them. 
We're going to talk a bit more about what SSL is, and then we can look at how do we actually set this up, because this is going to be our responsibility. So I want to have a quick look at this first link. I'm not going to read it all over to you, but I just want to point out the, rele the relevant points. So this article is fairly current from a few months ago. And one of the important points about the article, so first of all, you can tell a site is running under SSL because in the URL, in the address bar, you're going to see an S. And if we want, we can actually, we can see a lock here. And my Firefox browser tells me that there is a certificate issued and we can actually go in and view the SSL certificate. We can see who the certificate issuer is, how long it's good for, etc. There's digital signing. So it helps protect our data. But as of a few years ago, SSL, SSL also has a big impact on your search engine ranking. Um, so a few years ago, Google announced that HTTPS, that sites running under SSL were going to get preferential ranking over sites that didn't have an SSL security certificate. So that on its own uh, should be enough reason to have an SSL certificate. And if you look at some of the other numbers here in this infographic, um, a few years ago, Google started this trend, but Chrome will label any site that runs over HTTP only as insecure. So that's gonna scare a lot of users away. HTTPS websites also load faster. And if they look faster it loads, the higher it's going to rank. So it's actually been as long as six years that Google has factored SSL use into its ranking. So if we have a look, so for example, here's my site on AWS in Firefox. And you can see Firefox has got a lock through here saying it's not secure. And in my form, even when I start typing, Firefox warns me the connection is not secure and logins could be compromised. What this basically means is, hey, there's no SSL certificate. If we look in Chrome, at Chrome's version of this, Chrome was really the first browser to start warning people about SSL. And it says even more directly, hey, this site is not secure. So that's gonna scare a lot of traffic and a lot of users away. So for these reasons alone, SEO and the browser warnings, it makes sense to have SSL. Even if our website is completely static, there's no sensitive information, even if it's just straight HTML and CSS, we don't want users seeing that our websites are marked as not secure. So there's some other tips in here about the importance of SSL as it relates to SEO. So you can see Google started doing this a few years ago. And there are some different ways you can get SSL certificates. So I wanna talk about them. Um, this will be our responsibility in general to set up SSL certificates for any websites we create. Um, sometimes the web hosts take care of this and we'll actually talk about SSL on our AWS server in a bit as well. Right? I typically buy SSL certificates here from Namecheap. I put up a link here. And I'll kind of walk through the process. There is a little bit of a go-between when you set up an SSL certificate. So you can get different levels of encryption. So you can see some are for single domains, others can be multi-domains, and they have different levels of encryption. They also have different warranties. Okay, so Namecheap, they run anywhere from $5 a year to $158 a year. I believe these are US prices. So it explains the difference between the different levels. Now you can buy SSL certificates directly from your web host, but typically they're gonna charge much more than this. Now these would be costs your customer would pay, the owner of your site, you're not gonna pay these on your own. If we go and look, so one of the big issues of SSL certificates is actually GoDaddy. When GoDaddy started out, you could buy SSL certificates really inexpensively. However, if we look now, you're gonna see that their prices are much, much more expensive. Um, also, if you host with GoDaddy, they will not let you buy your SSL certificates somewhere else. You have to buy one of their certificates if your hosting is there, which is one good reason I find not to host my websites with GoDaddy. Not that cheaper is always better, but you do have the option. 
if you buy a certificate and most web hosts, some of the other hosting companies I, uh, I host with typically they're going to charge a lot more, um, because they will do all the work in setting up the SSL certificate. If you want to use a certificate from a host like Namecheap, there's a process you have to go through. I'm going to show you what this looks like. So the first thing you have to do is contact your web host and you need to ask them for a certificate request. And when that happens, they need information about the company that needs the SSL certificate. So here I made a new request for a client and my hosting company offered me a $75 certificate, which I declined and they asked for this information. So basically contact, administrative contact for the business owner, not for you, but for the organization that owns the website. You also have to specify whether you want it on www. or just on the base domain. One certificate only protects, unless you get a more expensive wildcard certificate, it will give you protection on one or the other. So I provided that information and they give me back what's known as a certificate request. So I take this information, then I would go to a certificate vendor, such as Namecheap. So here we can look at an SSL certificate that I've purchased. So I would go in here, I would buy the certificate, and then what I would have to do is provide that CSR code from the host here. So that has to get embedded into certificate. This means the certificates are not transferable from one host to the other. So I would put in, paste in the CSR code. I may have to validate the domain by uh, responding to a confirmation email. And once I would give them the certificate request to take the issuer a few minutes, they'd send me an email and say, your certificate is ready and you can download it. So I would download the certificate to my machine. So it looks something like this. So here are a bunch of SSL certificates. So every year I've gotten a new certificate for this domain. So this is what I would download. I downloaded it as a zip file from Namecheap. I would extract it. Then through FTP, I would upload this to my website. And then I would have to go back to the hosting company and say, the certificate is now on the website. Can you please install it? Because this has to be done by server administrator. We don't have access to do that. So this process might take an hour or two from the time you first issue this certificate request until the time the SSL actually gets installed. So don't leave this to the very last minute. Make sure that you um, that you do this in plenty of time. The certificate issuers are good at sending you notifications telling you your certificates are expiring. Now, if you don't want to go through the hassle, I could have just said here to the host, yes, I'll pay $75. You go ahead and create and set up the whole thing. It's more expensive, but totally hands off from our perspective if we allow the host to do it themselves. Another option now been out for a little while is called Let's Encrypt. So this is a free SSL certificate, which is available on many web hosts. Uh, it's a free renewable 90 day certificate. Um, hosts like GoDaddy don't support it because they want to sell you their $100 certificates. On other hosts, enabling Let's Encrypt on a domain is as simple as a click in the control panel. So for example, on this host that I've used for a long time, I can pick a domain, and all I have to do is click, well, I already have Let's Encrypt enabled. So if not, I can just click it and with a button, I have an automatic SSL. I don't have to buy anything. I don't have any back and forth. And my site gets this secure HTTPS. Um, so it might look like this. So here's the site where I'm using I'm using Let's Encrypt here. It's enabled. And I can see the site shows a secure. It's verified by Let's Encrypt. And I can view the certificate. 
So I believe these automatically renew every 90 days with Let's Encrypt. So I don't have to do anything. Yep, so it was issued in January. It's good for another, good until April, and it will automatically renew because this host supports Let's Encrypt. So I didn't have to do anything other than click a button to enable it and at no cost. So that's an option if your host supports it. Now, let's go back to our application for a minute. Notice our AWS server, it shows up as not secure. So uh, I've spoken to our CS technicians and they very graciously set up an SSL certificate that we can use. So now, from now on, I would recommend instead of accessing the web server through the IP address, you can actually use this domain if you use the computer studies. You're going to notice them. my music library. So this domain name points to the same server. But what Ali has done for us is he set up an SSL certificate that runs on this domain. So notice now we get HTTPS, unlike the version through our IP, which is marked as not secure. We now have an SSL certificate. So he's installed the free Let's Encrypt certificate for us here. It's going to be good. 90 days until early June. So if we go to Chrome, we're also going to see the improvement. Chrome will mark our site as secure as well. And in Firefox, in this version, if I go to register, I no longer get that warning saying the site isn't secure. Now, there's one last thing we need to think about with SSL, which is it's one thing to install the certificate. The other thing that Ali did on our server, but most servers don't do, and this is going to be up to us, is he's actually forced all requests to use the certificate. So if I take out the HTTPS and I try to make a plain text HTTP unencrypted request, we redirect, automatically redirect back. And there's a few ways that we can do this. I put a link here, how on a PHP site, most servers won't do this automatically. So I've put a link here, which explains a few options, how we can check when in HTTP. And if they are, request, we want to redirect to the same page, but this time over HTTPS. So one option is to use PHP code. So we might put this in our header on the first line where it will check the server array for HTTPS. And if it's not found, we'll redirect to the current URL, URI, but with the HTTPS version. Another way we can do it, these typically are if we, this is if we have access to the server directly, which we don't. But our other option is to create an HT access file. So this is an Apache configuration file. Um, we'll use it later today for doing things like handling 404 not found errors. So with these three lines of code, we turn on the rewrite engine and our condition is if HTTPS is off, we wanna rewrite the URL to the current domain and current URI, but with HTTPS on. Um, so you're not going to be able to see this in action on AWS because basically Ali has already done this for us. But on other websites, if you're using PHP, we can create this HT access file, upload it into our project directory, and that will automatically force all requests to use HTTPS. Um, so we will talk, we will have a number of questions on HTTPS on next week's quiz. So for us, for now, there isn't really anything we need to do, but moving forward, it's vital that you understand the importance of SSL, some of your options for setting it up and forcing all requests to use it. We're going to take a quick pause here, and when we come back, we're going to look at error handling with PHP.